The roaches in his house were not like the roaches in your house, or your mother's house, or in fact, in any other house in the world. He could not, by his own admission, speak for the roaches that may or may not have existed outside of houses, whether his own or any other, for this, as he had humbly confessed on more than one occasion in a former, more active life, was not his area of expertise. But any and all roaches that had ever existed or would ever exist within the confines of any house that had ever existed or would ever exist, at least within the realm of human experience. These he could speak for, though the only ones that demanded it, thereby proving his point, were those of his own abode. Why creatures of such transmundane intelligence had chosen him with his stutter and lisp and woefully lazy R's as their primary, perhaps only, mouthpiece, he had never understood. But choose him they certainly had. And who was he to argue? By day they had so little to say, and remained so well hidden, it was almost as though they had ceased to be. Or, perish the thought, had never been at all, but at night. Ah, at night. At night they poured forth from the walls like the black waters of a netherworld sea filling up not only the abyssal emptiness of his ancient domicile, but also, by virtue of dictation, that of his mind and heart. Or at least what passed for such. Then, without fail, the otherwise dormant man would spring to sudden life, cavorting from chamber to chamber like a gin-jigged marionette, giving voice to the multitudinous pronouncements that would otherwise have burst him at the seams. And driven ever upward by the power of words, he would find himself at last on the steep tin roof of the house. From which vantage point? He could feel his every utterance passing into the dreams of sleepers the world over, changing the shapes of their minds, altering the paths of their souls, modifying the very nature of the universe itself. But by and by the dawn would break, as the dawn always does. And in that very instant the torrent of words would cease, and the man suddenly shrunk to attend his borrowed sighs, would descend again into the bowels of the house, to cower in some lightless nook or cranny, and await the return of his gods. Ishona, Ihrana, Ifone, Nama.